Big topic here today, of course. Now, the president says since the Congress hasn't acted, he was forced to create his own plan here. We're joined now with political analyst John Dadian. So, of course, there's people with tears of joy, tears of anger. Give us your take on all of this. Well, I think what he did tonight, to be honest with you, is he drew a line in the sand, um, didn't give much leeway. He knows the other side's going to uh, oppose it. And it's ironic that he says that Congress hasn't done anything because he's going into his seventh year in office. And if he's saying that he has the authority to make this executive office, uh, order, he could have done it at any time. But, well, you, yeah, as far as the executive order is concerned, but what he's saying is, and he said this, I think, tonight, was that he wanted to do this through Congress, but that he was stonewalled along the way. Well, again, that's easy to say. You notice after our reason just a couple of weeks ago, midterm elections, both sides said they wanted an olive branch. Well, I think that lasted not even 24 hours. And again, th this is really both sides butting heads, and he's not giving them uh, much wiggle room on this one. So what do you think is going to happen now? What are the pitfalls with all of this? Well, I think one good possibility is that we know that it's going to be the Republicans take over the Senate and they already have the House come January, so they can just pass legislation to completely wipe this out. And one of the problems with that is he wants to use the term for these people to come out of the shadows. Well, if they come out of the shadows and then the law changes in a few short couple months, where does that leave these people who thought they were going to be under this program? It's really kind of a quagmire, quite honestly. And given that, I mean, how many people are coming out, would come out of the shadows, I guess, if they thought this is of a tenuous nature because the House is changing hands? That's exactly right. And to be honest with you, we've heard different numbers. I've heard numbers such as 5 million countrywide. I've heard 180,000 in San Diego. I'm not sure where they're getting these numbers from, uh, uh, quite honestly. One of the big problems that I saw in the speech tonight is that he set criteria, such as, you know, uh, if you're here five years uh, and that type of thing. Well, what about the people who are here four years? Then they still stay in the shadows and they're not going to go back across the border. So I don't see this as solving the problem that he says it intends to do. It almost seems too big. I mean, as he said, now a number of presidents have tried to deal with this. But it's as if you can't legislate this, that this is a social problem, this is an economic issue. I mean, there's a demand for the labor that's coming from Mexico and from other countries. So what can anybody do about it? It seems to be driven by forces that are really beyond the control of legislation. I'm not as pessimistic as, as you are. <laughs> I think there's numerous things. For example, uh, one thing that he said uh, in there that really affects San Diego specifically is that to, um, to loosen it up as far as the high skilled people. So for example, where, how that affects us is our local Qualcomm and of course many other biotechs and high techs, but those are the ones that have been dying to have the high level visas granted for these really high tech workers. So that was the only good part that I think the Republicans are going to agree with tonight. And of course, why today? Why pick this date to make this speech? I mean, any reasons behind that? Well, I'll be a little blunt. He was, probably, he was actually scared uh, to do it before the election uh, because even though, of course, it was a Republican uh, sweep that we saw recently the last couple of weeks, it might have been worse if he did this beforehand. So your prediction, uh, and we're running out of time here, does this stand with his speech tonight or is this doomed right off the launch pad? Oh, I think it's doomed in the long run. Again, we'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks. But again, the minute these Republicans get sworn in the first week of January, uh, you're going to see a lot of movement. Okay. All right. John, appreciate it. Very Thanks good.